Let's talk a little bit today about how to use Azure Data Factory's data flow to explore your data so that you can understand your data and you can prep it to make it ready for transforming your data at scale. So what I have on the screen is a data set of a mocked up loans data. It's a little bit less than a million rows in here. This is a CSV file and it has I think about 75 columns in it. So it's a fairly wide and deep um, data set. Now I'm in the mapping data flow portion of Azure Data Factory's data flows. And what I've done is I've clicked on the source transformation and I've clicked on data preview. So I have my data flow debug session on so I can interact with the cluster to be able to visualize and to be able to see the transformation uh, as it occurs in real time. So I've clicked on the statistics field and I've got the statistics for the column called grade. Grade, as you can see, is a string data type. And here's the breakdown of the different values in there. So this is a grading of the quality of the loan. And so you can see that there are no nulls and the total number of uh, not nulls is 887,000. So we have about 887,000 rows in total. And this is the breakdown of those values, the value distribution of that column. So the column is always one character, one length. This is a fairly clean data. When you look at this, this is one way to look at it and say that, you know, I don't really necessarily need to do too much work in cleaning this field. This looks um, pretty good as it is. Now, when you are looking at your transformed data here in the data preview from data flows, within the mapping data flows, you are always looking at a sampling of data. So if you go click on the debug settings, you can see that the defaults for um, the debug session is 1,000 rows. You can change this to whatever value you like. But when you're receiving the statistics to profile your data, like I'm showing in this chart here, that is always the entire data set. So we give you, it leverages the power of Spark in the back end to be able to give you the full range of the values and the distribution as well as the stats for that column across your entire data set. Now, if you switch with this button over here next to description into full screen, you can then navigate left and right throughout your graph to be able to see the data preview. And almost you're switching from graph mode, which I am in there, into data mode here. So now if I click the next button, I'm gonna move over to the data preview for the next transformation in my graph, which is my derived column. Okay, and my stats go away because I'm not profiling that column any longer from the source transformation and I blanked out member ID as one of the um, masking features that I've used through drive column. Now what I can do is I can also, uh, aside from taking stats, is I can take a column and I can modify it here from this data view within mapping data flows. So let's say for example that I didn't want to um, pass through the term uh, column any longer. I want to hide that from the output. So I can click on it and then I can say remove. And this will remove that column from the data set from this point forward in my flow. And I have a confirm or discard. So what was gonna happen is the transformations that I perform here at the data level on this data preview will take effect and become part of my graph unless I discard them. So let's do one more thing. Let's say that we wanted to take this ID column here we want to change that into a, uh, which is right now a number. Let's see, we wanted to change that into perhaps, let's say we want to move that into a string because we know that at some point maybe we're going to get values or we're going to uh, modify this with derived columns to values that are not only numeric. And so um, ADF for data flow has uh, performed the transformation, uh, changed the data type of that from numeric to string for me. Now, one other thing I want to show you is that the stats that you receive on columns, and again, the, the um, profiling here of statistics within mapping data flows is across the entire data set, not the sample data. So it gives you a true indication of what values lie within that, that column. I'm going to take this uh, column here, um, which is a numeric data type for the loan amounts, and you'll see that the stats in the return that you get from that, it's going to be different than what we saw for the value distribution because that was a categorical or a string column. This is a numeric column, and so you see there are no nulls, so there's nothing that is not null within here. Again, same thing as the other column. But now you're going to see the min max, average value, uh, the 50th, 50th percentile, standard deviation, some other 
information about this. This is how you see column level stats. This is how you work with data without needing to get into building out the graph within uh, mapping data flows. When you're done, if you like all the changes that you've made here in the prep and the exploration piece of mapping data flows, you can just click confirm and then you can click the down arrow here and now you'll have your graph view back and those transformations that you've asked for now become part of your graph. Now what I wanted to also introduce you to today is another way to be able to explore and profile your data and to prep it and that is using the Wrangling data flow which is a different type of data flow within Data Factory. Now for this I'm going to go over to my pipeline. In my pipeline I have two different types of data flows I'm using against my loans data that I was showing in the one we were on was right here at the bottom which is the mapping data flow. I can also use the Wrangling data flow. This will give you a slightly different experience. This is more for a data analyst. But what you can see is that I am going to do similar things but in smaller segments. So rather than get the at scale mapping data flow of the values per column across the entire data set, I just want to see a real quick snapshot of what the first thousand rows uh, look like, the top thousand rows look like in the data set in terms of profiling. Now you do this from adding a wrangling uh, data flow onto your pipeline canvas and then you click on options in global options then you click enable column profiles I am also looking at the quality de uh, the data quality details the value distributions and the profile in the details pane and I'm saying top 1000 rows you can also do entire data set here but this is the uh, power query engine not the uh, spark engine in this case and so this uh, may not complete or it might take a long time with a file of the size which is why I was in mapping data flows but perhaps I have data analysts involved in my process of my ETL here as well it wants to see across the entire data set and wants to get the uh, the graphs of only the first thousand rows doesn't want to uh, look at the detail on each uh, row, each column at a time for the entire data set so let's take a look at that grade column that we were um, examining on the mapping data flows. And if we click on it over here, what we can see is that the value distribution is going to be slightly different because now we only have a count of 1,000. And so these percentages of 35% for Bs, I think this is at 29 or 27% on the overall data set. So note that because this is sampling, you will get different percentages. And so um, this, the um, the 1,000 row sampling may meet your needs in terms of looking at the data in a smaller segment. And then some other things I'm doing in here is I was re uh, removing some duplicate columns. Uh, I was uh, sorry, I was reordering some columns. I was duplicating some columns, and I was doing some simple transformations like that here in this um, in this interface, which is very similar to the same working model that we had over there in mapping data flows when we're working with the. Um, data first. So there's a couple of different ways that you can profile your data and get some stats on it to explore your data before you perform your transformations using data flows in Data Factory.